Radios since the beginning of the 20th century have vastly affected our way of life. Through the transmission of sound for warfare, music, cell phones, and even our computers, these components helped revolutionize the way we behave and communicate. Radio waves are small ripples known as photons in the electromagnetic spectrum. These ripples are created by and also help create electrons, which also exist on the same spectrum. The electron first is given energy by an induced voltage, usually through magnetism, which is called Faraday's law. When given enough energy, the electron can reach a new energy state on the atom, known as the conduction band. When the electron moves back down due to a change in voltage, it emits a photon. As the voltage changes in size, this rate of change is mimicked in the frequency of the wave. The most modern use, which is used in nearly every communication device, is frequency modulation. Frequency modulation is when a signal is transmitted across one of the parameters of a constant amplitude cosine wave. As the cosine wave travels across the electromagnetic spectrum, a phase lock loop can receive the signal and translate it into a usable sound wave. What is a phase lock loop? A phase lock loop utilizes the main concepts of electrical engineering, that is, feedback, transistor circuit analysis, circuit superpositioning, and electromagnetics. When these four concepts combine, they can work together into forming a working product. The circuit is composed of four main boxes, which we will handle separately. The first box is the antenna design, of which I'll designate a separate video when I learn about them. For right now, I'll just use a wire and see how that handles. From the antenna, the signal is sent to a ring diode mixer. The ring diode mixer works by forward biasing diodes in a way that is proportional to the signal. At the same time, the reverse bias of the diodes receives a signal from the second input. This results in a modulated signal when viewed from the taps of the transformer. You'll have to take my word for it due to the density of the video. When two cosine waves of different frequencies are multiplied, an identity appears, which states cosine A times cosine B is equal to cosine A plus B plus cosine A minus B. And when the signals are very close to each other, this identity translates to cosine 2A plus cosine DA, which is equal to cosine 2A plus 1 minus DA, DA being the differential. The next component that we place into the circuit is called an integrator often called a low-pass filter. The integrator has two main properties. The integrator will block nearly all high-frequency signals due to the capacitor and the fact that the integral of cosine A is equal to 1 over A times sine A, which, if A is large, approaches zero. The second property is that the integrator will sum up any low-changing frequency. The first property will remove the high frequency component, cosine 2a, and the second property will change dA, which is a differential, into the frequency component, a, effectively demodulating the signal. However, this only works when cosine b is closely following cosine a, with a very small margin of error, something that can't be done manually. So how do we get it to follow? Through feedback, Cosine B is nothing more than a voltage-controlled oscillator. The voltage dictates the frequency, and considering that we have the output from before, even if the output isn't accurate initially, the use of feedback will instantly force it to always follow the nearest changing radio frequency. Think of it like this. We start off with a huge range of radio stations coming into the loop. These radio stations, as per FCC regulations, must be over 100 kHz away from each other both in the positive and negative directions. By definition, the integrator must effectively sum up the differential and reject all high frequencies, which is every other signal that is not close to the one we're oscillating for. How does the mixer determine which is the closest to the desired frequency that we place in? The user determines it for the mixer. By tuning the dial on the radio, you're changing the frequency of the local oscillator and, in turn, the frequency you're listening to. Here's the phase lock loop I made at home. 
the local oscillator will oscillate at a frequency of roughly 3 to 4 megahertz. And when it locks, it has a lock range of roughly 10 kilohertz. The reason for the low lock range is because of the varactor diode I'm using for the feedback. It only allows a small distinct change in the local oscillator's frequency. Installing a Class E amplifier at the output of the local oscillator and in the feedback would result in a much wider range and more accurate sound.